Hi everybody, today is Monday, December the 7th. We have exactly 18 more days left for the Jolly Holly Santa Claus comes, and most importantly, the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But anyway, um, it's Monday, November the, I mean, December the 7th. It's 11.07 Pacific Time. Thanks everyone that's joining me today. Um, I see a lot of you are still over there in the strawberry fields. So come on in and join the chat. I This is a live show with a live chat. And the ladies and some men, are, I suppose, are in there. They all talk amongst themselves. And we have good laughs and a good time. So again, thank you for joining me. And let's get the show on the road. Okay. So every year, I like to make something for um, our home. And I started this tradition probably about... I don't know, four years ago, give or take. And last year, I went a little crazy, and I wanted to have those things out to show you, and I was looking for them earlier, um, but I couldn't exactly put my hands on all of them, so I'll just show them to you throughout the month, and you can get an idea for them. But one of the things I did, and I had a lot of fun doing, was I went to, I was in uh, Michael's, and they had these uh, boxes. They're called decor boxes, and they're paper mache boxes. And I think I paid like maybe a dollar and a half or two dollars for them. And I grabbed about, ooh, the first time I grabbed five, and then I went back and got five more. So what I do is every year um, I give all the ladies, girls in the family, and a few selective friends <laughs> Christmas socks, and I'm always trying to find a creative way to to uh, package them so they don't know what they are. So this year, last year, I did it. I put them in here. So I also what I, I first I took off this lid right here and I decorated it and you know put little chopkas on top and stuff and then I put their socks inside with a piece of Ghirardelli candy or something. And they had no idea what was in here. And I decorated it so that they could put it on display in their house, you know, throughout the Christmas season for years to come. So I made myself one, but I didn't put any socks in it. And this is the one I made for me. And um, this is a thistle tree. Um, of course, you know, Tim Holtz has them and other people have them. And then these again, are, are uh, these are stickers that, you know, three-dimensional stickers. And these little guys um, are ornaments that are supposed to hang on your tree. And I got them at Hobby Lobby. I got a penguin for my sister-in-law who loves penguins. So I put a penguin on top of her box. And um, this one I saved for myself. It's a snowman. And so I decorated it and put the, you know, used um, glossy accents to keep the things on top. And then when they opened it, now this one's hard to open because I didn't rub this one with wax paper because I didn't want it to open it to put anything in it. But the ones I gave for gifts before I put the top on, they really aren't this, well, when I give them, they aren't this hard to open because I rub them with the wax paper. But there's nothing in here, so there's no need for me to open it. Um, but because I put the paper on there, it made it a little tight. So what I did was, I, before I put the lid on, I rubbed it with wax paper and um, several times and tested it and everything to make sure that, you know, they didn't have to rip it apart to get it open. And they all told me that it opened really easily. So just keep in mind, when you see these little boxes, wherever you may see them, you know, Dollar Tree, Dollarama, I, like I say, Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, wherever you see them, you know, you may, like, the first time I saw them, I thought, well, that's the ugliest thing. I don't like that crown. Um, but then I, while I was standing in line, I thought, well, I could rip that crown off, and it came off really easily. So I did that, and then I decorated like this. So this one will be displayed in my home um, this Christmas, 
and my sister-in-law's they'll display theirs and it'll, it's a lot of fun so I just wanted to show you that because today we're going to make a piece of home decor that I wanted to make um, for our home and so that's what we're going to do today <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, right around the time that Halloween was in full swing and Thanksgiving was right around the corner, it was like Halloween had just ended, Thanksgiving stuff was coming out, but a little bit of Christmas was sneaking in. I was in Joanne's and I saw this paper mache star, 3D star. And um, this is a big one. There's three that actually sit. They're nested, but in Joanne's, they weren't nested. They were sold separately. So they had the large one, which is this one, and the medium one, and they were selling them separately. So I got them because I thought, you know, I want to add to my collection that I make something every year for the house. And so I didn't know what I was going to make with it. You know, I just thought it was really pretty. I mean, I didn't know if I was going to turn it over and decorate it like this, you know, to set on the mantel with a pretty vignette up here, or if I was going to make something in here. So after looking, you know, around different places and um, social media, I decided I was going to make it so that it would stand up like this. And I found these Christmas bells. This one says peace. There's another one just like it that says joy and another one that says Noel. Um, I grabbed them at the Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby when they first started putting out their Christmas stuff. So what I want to do is I want to hang the bell like this. I don't know if you can see it. Ah. But anyway, the bell will hang here. It's not working, is it? Can you see what I'm trying to show you? The bell will hang like that after everything's said and done. Okay? So that's what I want to do with that. And I want to decorate it inside. And then on the outside here, I want to use the um, Tim Holtz stencil, the festive stencil that I... Um, I just love because you know I love the holly and the berries and so I'm gonna put that on the edge here all the way around with some texture paste and then I want to color these either with mica powder or um, distress glitter by um, Ranger by Tim Holtz so well, I don't know how far we'll get today but that's what we want that's what I'm gonna do and then I found some lights because, you know, Sandra went to Michael's and bought up all those lights, those cute little lights with the snowflakes. She bought every one they had. And I got to Michael's. They didn't have any. <laughs> so I've been teasing her that she bought them yesterday. I mean, she bought them over the weekend. But I had these lights in my stash from when I used to do another project, another craft. And they're um, tin lights they're battery operated and they're mini lights so I want to bring them up from the back and then use the top to somehow set on there just barely set on there like that so that it will hide the battery pack okay so like I said I don't know how far we get today but we're gonna have fun and that's the most important thing so what I did earlier was um, I didn't think you guys would want to see me cut paper and, you know, try to figure things out. Um, I don't mind doing that when I'm teaching you something, of course, absolutely. But in something like this, you know, uh, it took me a while to figure out the dimensions and the sizes and what I wanted to do and et cetera, et cetera. And I didn't think you guys would want to sit around and watch me do that when you'd much rather watch me do the fun part, which is decorating, right? Right. So the first thing I did was, um, I'll run you through the steps of what I did. I laid on a 12 by 12, I took a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock paper, and I chose white because that's what I had the most of. 
and I laid the box on there and I traced around it. And then I dropped that in the box and saw where I needed to make adjustments. And I needed to cut it down. So I just kept, I cut a little bit off and I dropped it in the box, cut a little bit off and I dropped it in the box until I got it the size it needed to be. Okay? So that's how I ended up with this. And I just saw a pencil mark that I need to erase. And I'm using the Victorian, uh, a Victorian Christmas by Prima. That's my Christmas paper that I have chosen to make all my um, projects out of for this year. My Christmas cards, my Christmas tags, um, my, you know, all that's made out with the December Daily. I mean with the, gosh, December Daily, with the uh, Prima Victorian Christmas. So then I needed to decide how big these, there's 10 of these little um, um, sides in here. So I labeled them 1 through 10, and I needed to decide, figure out how big they were. So I took a ruler, of course, and I measured them, and then I cut a piece of white cardstock and stuck it in there. And then once I got the dimensions right, then I cut it out of my Prima paper. And so then as I was laying them um, in the box, I, you know, I made sure I numbered the back, like this is number one, and it's going to go on piece number one, which is right here. Okay? So see how that lays in there? So that's how I got that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ink the edges with frayed burlap. See, here's my little sample for each, for how, you know, big those little panels were. And one thing I do need to tell you when you're working with something like paper mache, thank you, Jenny. Jenny put the link in for the Victorian Christmas at scrap a dab -a -do. When you're working with something like paper mache, it's not always even and it's not always balanced. And by that I mean, even though I cut each one of these for the Pacific panel, sometimes they would lay flush up against here, and sometimes they'd be a little bow. But I knew my paper was um, straight. So that's why I painted a border on the inside of my box. You'll see it's painted. That way, because I didn't want the paper mache showing, but that will tie the paper and the um, background together and it'll look more uniform. And of course, it'll be polished and finished. Okay, so any questions so far about anything that we're doing uh, today? So I know some of you have your tree up already. We will probably put ours up this week, for sure, by the weekend. And I'll probably start putting some things out around the house. What do you mean, no? You have your whole house decorated, Zandra. <laughs> of course, you didn't put up as much, you said, this year because... We're leaving to go to CHA right after the first of the year. We're going to Prima Art Venture, and then when we finish with that, um, the very next day that we finish is um, CHA begins. So she said, Sandra said she didn't put as much up this year. You mean, no, you have no questions? Oh, good. Last week, I felt like I just botched so bad doing the cards and um, if you want to see the cards let me get the link I posted um, a blog I wrote a blog post yesterday there's the link to my blog and it shows you all nine of the cards that we uh, well we made I don't know, four or five of them on the show last Wednesday, and then I finished them, and um, 
I showed you a picture of all of them and I gave you a link to the tutorial. The One Sheet Wonder is a great, great tool for when you want to knock out a lot of cards and you just want the, you want the designer piece of the paper to all be the same, but you want each card to be a little different, but not so different that it bogs you down. So once you get your um, designer paper cut and your mats, which she gives you the measurements for in the tutorial, they go together very, very fast. And if you watch my Ustream from last week, you'll see, uh, you'll get all the tips, you'll hear rather, all the tips I gave about when you're working in mass production, um, specifically the uh, One Sheet Wonder, there's a lot of things you can do that will make your life a lot easier and your cards will go a lot faster. So there's One Sheet Wonders for 6x6, six 12x12, six, 12 12, and the one I used, oh, and there's one for 8.5x11, um, the one I used was 8x8. Eight eight. So I'm just distressing the um, individual panel pieces here, again with the frayed burlap. So I already have some things um, to put in my December daily. And my goal is that before I start filling it up, I want to do a, a YouTube video where I'll do a flip through and everyone can see what it looks like. I'm real happy with the way it turned out. So, so is anyone going, what's everybody doing this week? Do you have any holiday parties to go to or Christmas parties I should say? Or are you going Christmas shopping online, which is my favorite? Or um, are you making anything? Some people must be crafting or arting today. The chat's very quiet. So Jennifer has a company Christmas party Saturday, dollhouse Christmas party Sunday, and a busy weekend next weekend. And Carol's going to start and try start and do her baking. When Greg's mother was alive, she was the best baker. She was a good cook, but she was a phenomenal baker. And there wasn't much of anything. She baked uh, peanut butter brittle, English toffee, which was my favorite. Um, Nut clusters, fudge, her fudge was to die for. And I have all her recipes from when she lived in, and she adjusted them. Like when she lived in Cedar Rapids is when, where Greg was born, is when she started baking. And then they moved to um, Plano, Texas. So in the side of the recipe, she writes Plano, Texas and the year and the adjustments she made for the altitude and all that stuff. Then they moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico. So that year when she baked, she wrote Albuquerque, New Mexico and the year and the altitude adjustments for the temperature and the rock candy and all that stuff. And they moved one more time, which was to Reno, California, I mean Reno, Nevada, and she adjusted again. So I have all those recipes, but she never lived at sea level and she um, passed away before we moved here. She passed away in 96 and Greg and I have tried our best to adjust all the level, all, just everything. We've asked people that we know and her recipe, I don't know, it just doesn't like sea level. 
So we really don't um, have anyone to bake for per se because you know we have no children so there's no grandbabies and my mom bakes for my family and then his sister she you know they're just not into the um, us baking anything but we do send them the peanut butter brittle so Carol makes oh caramel corn his mother made great caramel corn so Carol's going to make car caramel corn, Ritz cracker cookies, snowball fudge, bubble cake, and salted caramels. Now, what is bubble cake? What is bubble cake? So I'm going to use gel medium to, oh gosh, maybe I'm going to use gel medium. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I didn't mean to burst your eardrums. Let me turn the volume off while I get the top off. Okay, I'll have I'll be right back. I gotta go get my special tool to get things off. I'll be right back. Okay, I'll bring out the big guns. Zendra, I thought about you when I used this the other day because, like me, you have uh, arthritis in your hands. And so I bought this at the grocery store. And if you want, I'll see if I can find one for you. But you put it in the lid that it, you know, is designed for. And it, you know, put it in the right size. And you hold it. <coughs> Dang. Any twist, but this one's not working. <laughs> okay, hold on. I have another bottle. Man, this is bad. I don't know what I did. I guess I could use a glue stick if I can't. Usually this works like a charm. All right. Okay. Oh, see, there you go. I just had to get it. I didn't have it lined up. Okay. I'll see if I can find you one, Zandra. It's a lifesaver because, you know, with this finger not bending... It's really hard for me to open certain things. So I'll see if I can find you one. Oh, okay. Rub Vaseline. Whew, mercy. Goodness. Goodness gracious. Okay. Put that in there. And let me get my um huh oh well i have another one cloth and my brush okay so i'm gonna use uh, matte medium to put these down so there's number one so, and it may be a little hard for you guys to see what I'm doing, but I'll try my best to make sure you can see. So right now I'm just putting the matte medium on the back. Then I'm going to set that there, and I'm going to find number one, which is right here. And I'm going to put some matte medium in here. Can you see? Okay. You guys can see. 
So I painted this last night. Oh yeah, I need to tell you the colors I used. Let me get this down and I'll tell you. Just a second. And another thing I did is if I saw that it had to go a certain direction, I put a T or an arrow for the top. So I'm going to set this in here. Then I'm going to brush some matte medium over that because I may want to put something on there and I want that matte medium on there so that I'm able to do whatever I want to do because right now I'm not real sure okay and the matte medium dries clear all right so the way I got this color was I took the Liquitex um, Gesso and the um, Espresso, the Ranger Espresso Paint Dauber. And I mixed them. In fact, here it is. I had it left out overnight. I tested this morning. It's still good. I mixed them in a little bowl until I got the color I wanted. And then I took my paintbrush and I painted on it. And I did two coats. And so that's how I got that. And um, like I said, I put this in the plastic bag, and when I came in here this morning to test it, it was still very wet. You know, I mean, I could still use it. It had not dried out. So that's how I got that. I mixed the Espresso Acrylic Paint by Ranger with the Gesso. Okay, so we have number one down, and let's do number two. And again, I'm going to put some paint right here. I mean some paint, good Lord. I'm going to put some um, gel medium. <laughs> and then I'm going to put some on here. So if you have any questions for me or... Uh, suggestions or anything if you'll put them in all caps that way when I look up at the chat I'll see them right away so this is number two and number two is going to go right here okay see how they are right there and then I'm going to put some gel medium of that so is anybody making anything for their home or for a gift or are you ahead of the game and already finished if you are good for you <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to go to number three, and we're just going to keep going round and round. So here's number three. Okay, so we'll put some gel medium in there. Let's see. Yeah, this works better. Y'all can see better. And then we'll put some gel medium on the back. And I'm using the um, Faber-Castell gel medium. There's all kinds. There's all different kinds. So whichever one works best for you. This one seems to do real good for me. So this is the one that I'm using today. So now we're going to put number three in here. Uh, this is 
stiffen up a little bit in the back so I want to I'm just taking a paintbrush and pushing that down in the back. Janie and Margaret Ann, have you started any beading for Christmas gifts or just beading in general? I see your beautiful post on Pinterest. Janie, looks like you had a nice outing this weekend with your family. Okay, and number four. Sorry, you guys tell me if I, if you can't see, you won't be able to see perfectly in there, but you get an idea of what I'm doing. Oh, okay. Good, Janny. I'm glad you had a good time. It looked like you were having lots of fun. We wanted to go to the Oxnard Tamale Festival Saturday, or was it yesterday? Yesterday, but we forgot. <laughs> we both got busy doing things around the house, and I was in my craft room, and Greg went and did some things, and then we remembered, oh my gosh, the Tamale Festival, and um, it was over. But we have a wonderful neighbor that lives across the street. They um, are, uh, their ethnicity is um, Hispanic, and she makes uh, the best tamales. And we get a big heaping plate full every year for Christmas. So I don't think there's anybody that could top her tamales. Carol went to the Nutcracker on Saturday, and Janie bought some beads, but she needs to buy some more. Isn't that always the way? <laughs> okay, now we're on panel number five. You can see I'm just working my way around. Okay, and then I got, and see here, I wrote top, because when I put it in there to test it, when it went in this way, it fit better. So that's what I was saying earlier about marking them, you know, the top or bottom, whichever way works for you. And I'm going to slide this one in here. And for the most part, they do butt up to the edges, but there's a couple of places where they don't. And that's it's more the box and the way the box is made than it is you and cutting the paper. Okay. Oh, Janie saw moose, bald eagles, antelope all off the side of the road as you drove. Oh, wow, Janie. We, when we were in Alaska, we all wanted to see moose. And um, we saw caribou. We never saw the moose. We saw lots of stuffed ones, which were gorgeous. We did see a lot of eagles. Now we're on panel number six.
Did anyone watch the special on TV last night on CBS tribute to Frank Sinatra? 100 years tribute to Frank Sinatra? Was really good. We got halfway through and Greg started nodding off, and we were recording it anyway, so we'll finish watching it tonight. Okay, now we're on piece number seven and see our marked top here. See how pretty that's going to be inside? Yeah, it was really good. The part, like I say, we've only seen half of it because um, Honey started nodding off. Thank you, Jennifer. This is a uh, Prima paper, and this is the Christmas paper today designed by Frank Garcia. And it's uh, the name of it is A Victorian Christmas. And maybe one of the ladies can put, oop, Jenny's already on it. Um, there's the link. Um, if, you, if they have it, you probably, and you want it, you should get it because a lot of it is already out of stock and they won't be making another run. And so um, if you think you're going to want to use it and you like it and you can afford to get it, I suggest you do that. <laughs> it, it's been selling like hotcakes. Okay, we're on number eight. I saw the nut crate. I saw the nut cracker. <laughs> the nut cracker. Oh my gosh. I saw the nut cracker probably 2009, I think. It was a local production put on um, by the local ballerina. Uh, one of the ballerina uh, studios here, and the lady I worked for at the time, her daughter was um, in the play, so my girlfriend and I took her granddaughter to see it, and that child did not move the whole time. She was on the edge of her seat, totally engrossed, and she was probably about five at the time. Was she was just so cute sitting there watching her eyes wide open, and they were all cute. All of them in the play were very cute. That was the first time I had ever seen the Nutcracker. Um, my family, my mother wasn't into plays and things like that, theater or nothing like that. Um, so we didn't go to the theater as a child. I'm an underprivileged child. I can't believe didn't get to go to the theater, but I turned out okay. I've been to the theater since. Okay, we're almost done. We're on number nine. Yeah, what I think I used the for this one because I bought the whole collection. I used the A4 pad for this, but for the star, I had to use a 12 by 12 piece. But for cards, you could use the um, 6 by 6 pad very easily for A2 cards. Well, there were only two of us, Carol, but my mother and father, my father could not read or write. And so he would, he grew up on a tobacco farm, never saw the inside of a school, I don't think. He could read his name and spell his name, and that was about it. He could write his name, rather. But, um, you know, he could care less about the theater. What the hell, you know, why go theater? Are you crazy? 
And my mother was never exposed to any of that as a child because, you know, they were they were poor. But we did watch a lot of things on TV. But I don't remember ever watching The Nutcracker. I mean, my daddy didn't even like going to the movies to see a movie. I mean, he might take us to the drive-in movie if it was something that he liked. But my mom would take us. We would go with uh, another family. My mom had a very good friend, and she'd take her kids, and my mom would take my brother and I. And that's when you had the coiled mosquito repellent things, you know. And us kids would get a blanket and sit out there and make a mess out there instead of in the car. It was a lot of fun. But yeah, my daddy didn't like to go to restaurants to eat either. All right, and we're on number 10. I think I was almost out of high school before we ever went to a restaurant to eat because he just didn't see the point in it. I think it was he couldn't read the menu, you know, and he didn't want to be embarrassed and my mom have to tell him stuff. But as he got older, he kind of got out of that. Hi, I found you. How are you today? Thanks for stopping by today. Some more people are coming in. We're always glad to have you. Again, if you're out over there in the anonymous section or in the cornfields, not, you know, over here in the chat, jump on, jump on in, jump on in, jump on in and have a nice conversation with the ladies in the chat or with me. We have a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm going to turn this one around only because I think it's going to fit a little better. And then I'm going to take my tool and just poke back there. And then I'm going to put some gel medium here. So once again, if you missed it, I'm covering these with gel medium because I'm not quite sure what I might want to put on there. And the gel medium will give me the luxury of putting a lot of different things on there, whereas the paper may not, just the plain paper. So I'm just looking in the box now to make sure that everything's down pretty good. It looks like it is. Oh, Jenny says she was the youngest of four, so by the time it was just her parents and herself, they ate out a lot. <laughs> she started cooking just so they could eat in. Excuse me. But we always had a garden, you know, a summer garden, a spring garden, a fall garden, a winter garden. It wasn't very big. It was big enough. And, um, okay, I'm going to hit this with the heat gun just a little bit before I put that big piece in. So we always had fresh food and a freezer full of food. And my daddy, I guess, figured, why should I go, you know, give somebody else money for food when I got food here? <laughs> I don't know. So I see some pieces that I need to press down a little bit. Like right here, this piece doesn't look like it wants to lay down too good. And back in here, so right now you won't be able to see too much of what I'm doing. But I'm just pressing down some edges that look like they're lifting. Like here's one down here. And this is this paper is is this is cardstock paper, so it's a little heavier and it takes a little more um, gel medium to hold it down than just paper paper. So that's why I'm just going in there and making sure that it's all down real good. Okay, 
because I don't want it to lift up. Okay. So I'm going to turn the heat gun on just for a second. Okay, so now it's time to put our star down. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make a dry run, and I think I want it went this way, but I'm not sure. So I just keep turning. I should have marked it, and I didn't. Yep, that's good right there. Thank you, thank you. Ah. So I'm going to put some gel medium in here. And I don't want to put a whole lot, you know, I don't want to saturate it. But I want to make sure I get good coverage because, you know, I'm spending a lot of time to make it and I want it to last. I don't want it to start lifting. So. There's nothing more aggravating than you make something and it's very pretty and then it starts lifting. Make sure you get up back up in the corners, you know, use that brush to get back up in there. Okay. Once again, you know, with the paper mache boxes or any box really that's manufactured, no matter how hard you try, or for me anyway, um, it's not going to be perfect in there. And, you know, I figure I could drive myself crazy trying to make it perfect in there, or I could paint it in there and it would all just blend in. And so that's what I did. So now I'm covering this with gel medium. I really don't have a I had sort I know the type of scene I want, the feel I want, but I don't know exactly what I'm gonna put in there. I pulled some things, but um I want it to be um you know to go with the paper and to have more of a vintage feel to it. And I know that my ah ball is a little shiny but I think it'll still mix in with the paper. It's not like a bright Christmas red, so I think it'll still work. Okay, I'm going to do the heat gun for a moment. Does anybody have any questions?
Just a few more moments, a few minutes, just another minute or so. Okay, I think it's dry enough that we can start doing something. So, um, I have these little thistle, okay, let me get, let me put my brush in some water. This is an old Parmesan cheese bottle, you know, and I just fill it halfway with water and then I stick my thing in there. I like it because when my brush isn't in there, I can close it and it doesn't, if it tops over, then it won't get everything wet. So, and I make sure I set it out of my way so I don't <laughs> knock it over. And I'm not going to seal that until I can put my Vaseline on it like Xandra told me. Okay, so I have these little thistle trees and wreaths. And I had these colored ones left over from a class I took last year. And then I have some of these little baby ones. And then I have these little pretty wreaths. My goodness. Okay. There's that. See, I, would, I love this, but I think this would blend in too much because of the color of the paper. My goodness. Maybe not. We'll stick that out there because that green really doesn't go that well. And then, um, yeah, I'm just pulling some things. Thank you, Sandra. Oh, here's some more little thistle trees. I just want to uh, pull a few little things to see what I can use. Okay, so my lights. Oh, here they are. Here's my lights. Now, I have to tell you, I'm a little nervous about this. And look, I don't have any batteries. Oh well, I can put the batteries in later because it's going to sit on the back of the box. I'm a little nervous about this, but we'll see. We will see. My goodness, they've got these things all. I used to make these real pretty jars. You took um, mason jars and you put these lights in there 
and this part hung down the back and um, then you filled it with potpourri and you put a crocheted doily on top okay thanks Sandra and um, I made them and gave them to people and they loved them because when you turned on the lights it heated up the potpourri not enough to catch it on fire or anything just to warm it just a little bit to give off a little aroma so when I went down to my friend's house in San Diego a couple weeks ago she still has hers and I made that about well let's see I moved here in 2001 so probably about 10 years ago my mom taught me that craft and we just went crazy making them okay so let me see what's going on here and you needed a strand of 35 and so I went all over Ventura County hunting for strands of 35 lights that had a battery pack and you never guess where I found them you got it at the Dollar Tree I must have bought like fifteen dollars worth I came home and Greg's like what in the world are you gonna do with all those lights I showed him okay this one's kind of messed up here see this is Sandra's fault because she made that beautiful <laughs> everything's her fault today I'll just leave it like that I don't think it's gonna really matter that much I don't know how I would get that untangled it's gonna be on the back anyway Sandra made that beautiful um, um, journal page and she put those miniature snowflake lights on it and I thought I'm gonna put those on my box okay so Sandra said do it on my sample first good good tip good tip so let me see there's 10 lights here so we got one two let me see we got one two three four five and then we could do uh, six seven eight um, let me see yeah I do too I do too Janie and she has it in her guest bedroom and I see it every time I go stay with her so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five. I like this better. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You know, I gotta think, where's my thing gonna hang? Okay, because my um, jingle bell is going to hang right here. Like, I ah, wish I could show you guys. The camera's not exactly right, like that. So, see, I don't have. See, that's the jingle bell's going to hang sort of like that. So I want a light there. Okay, except this is the top. So let's just think for a minute. If that's going to hang like that. Okay, so this is going to hang like this. See, this is how it's going to look. 
like that. So yeah, I have them in the middle. One, two, three, four, five. I have one in the middle. And then I was going to put some inside. Is that what you're saying? Like I was going to put them up a little higher, not exactly there, but like one. Okay, two. Three, four, five, whoops, and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What do y'all think? Do you think that's a good balance? Because we could do. Six, seven, eight, nine, and then ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like that? Okay. All right, here we go. If I mess it up, we'll have to wait the next year because they don't have these anymore. <laughs> but I could lay it like this, right? And poke my hole from the back, right? I probably need something bigger than that. I probably need my scissors, huh? Let's see what the damage is on the inside. Oh, it's not bad. But still too small for my light. Okay. So Janny and, and Zandra, y'all are in charge of telling me if I start messing up. just want to see how big I got to get the hole to get them down in there without breaking anything. Oh, it's coming through. Oh, perfect. Ooh, look. You see it in there? Okay, so we're just going to leave this here, and we're going to keep going. Okay, that one's in. I'm being very careful to twist and push so that I don't break the bulb. And then when I'm finished, I'll just cut the paper loose from around the bulb. Oh, I don't have that. <laughs> That's one of the things I don't have, Miss Linda, is the Martha Stewart screw hole punch. <laughs> But this is working pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape these down. I might have to build this up some. 
no, no, it's going to work. Yay, it's going to work. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, so let me tell you all while I'm punching holes what happened to me on Friday. Cindy, a.k.a. Messy Blogger, thought this was hilarious. But I did, too, after it was all said and done. So I go to the Hobby Lobby because I needed some more adhesive runner because I use the um, My Stick by, um, oh my gosh, now I can't remember who it's by. It's by um, 3M. And I just love this. You just, you buy the whole thing together and then all you buy is the refills and it just slides in. And I love it, okay? So I needed some more. So I thought, oh, I'm going to go over there because I don't want to be over there on the weekend, you know, blah, blah, blah. So six was right here, I think. So I go over there, but first I was going to go to Michael's because I'm looking for this. Um, I wanted some more glitter paper. So I go to Michael's, which, you know, Michael's is kind of going downhill in my opinion. Um, but anyway, they're good for certain things, but for specific things, you know. Anyway, so I go over there and um, oh, I did that wrong. This should, this should go here. I get what I want. I leave. I go to Hobby Lobby. I get my adhesive runner, blah, blah, blah. And I leave Hobby Lobby and I'm really, really thirsty. So I thought, I'm going to go over here to McDonald's right here in the shopping parking lot and I'm going to get me um, an iced tea. So I am cut, going through the parking lot, cutting through, you know, you know how the parking lot has lanes like this, right? Right? Well, I decided I would cut through rather than go all the way up and come all the way down. I just cut across. And you can do that. Sort of. So, I go, I'm going and I turn too sharp and I hit the curb in the parking lot. I'm scaring you doing it? No, no, honey. I'm okay. I'm not holding the glass. I'm holding this right here. Because that's because I don't want to break it. So, I hit the curb real hard, and I think, uh-oh, Greg's going to kill me if I don't stop doing that. I'm going to mess up the rims to the tire. <laughs> so, I get into the McDonald's line, and I'm just so thirsty. And the guy's standing there, and he says, hi, what can I get for you today? And so, I make my order. Then he began to scream him. I said, well... Yes, but it's not food related. And he looks at me and I said, could you just walk around to the right, rear right of my car and tell me, is something wrong with my tire? Because it feels funny. He's like, oh yeah, sure. He comes back, he goes, uh, ma'am, you have a flat tire. I'm like, a what? <laughs> you have a flat tire. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, flat, flat, like flat like a pancake I'm like oh my gosh this is ridiculous so this was like three o'clock Friday afternoon I said okay thank you very much so I go through the lot go through the drive-thru and I get my food and I pull over and I call triple a good old triple a and they said okay we'll be out there in x amount of time I said okay so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking Cindy Jenkins would get the biggest kick out of this so I text her I'm like, you'll never guess what happened to me and where I'm at. And I tell her, hi, Gwen. And she goes, she writes me back. Well, that's God's way of punishing you for spending too much money. Ha, ha, ha. So I wrote back, well, I only spent $50. She wrote, uh-huh. But really, I think she was trying to tell me, that's what you get when you don't go shopping with me, right? So I called AAA and they came and everything was great. But like, this is the tire right here. And this is where the bolt says there's a big gouge right here on the side of the tire. I mean, a big gouge. And Greg said to me, you had to have hit something beside a cement curb because cement curb wouldn't do that. And I said, well, I don't know what it would have been, you know. Anyway, we got a new tire. It'll be here Wednesday. All is good. So I'm going to go see because I'm excited. I want to go see if Greg has two batteries so we can light up our lights. 
But first, I'm going to cut this paper off. So that was pretty easy, huh? You know, sometimes you have an idea in your head, but it just doesn't turn out the way you anywhere near what you think it's going to turn out to be. <laughs> but I love that we can watch other shows and get inspired to try things. And then when we do them, we're like, oh my God, I did it. <laughs> so that's what I hope. You know, I hope that like me, you watch the shows and you get inspired to try something and you put your spin on it or you make it exactly like that person did, but you tried it. It was something that maybe was out of your comfort zone or you'd never done before, but you had always wanted to. That's what the shows are about. That's why we do the shows. We love chatting with you each week and catching up on you, your little endeavors and you know, sending you love and hugs, and that's what it's about, is to be inspired and be crafty and have a good time. You know, personally for me, I'm not in competition with anybody. I'm just trying to do my own thing, whatever that may be at the moment. <laughs> and, you know, there are people that... Uh, They want to be like somebody else. I just want to be like me, whatever that is. <laughs> I just want to have a good time talking with people on Monday and making pretty stuff, as Heidi Swap says. Make pretty stuff. Okay, so there's our lights. Oh, my gosh. So let me go get, um, see if I got some batteries. I'll be right back. I think I need, um, I think I need two C batteries. Okay. Okay, I found two C batteries. So let's see how pretty it is. Come on now. Oh, come on. Don't be such a tootie. this one will go in better. Let's see, the positive goes over here. These are C batteries. Yep. I'm having the roughest time getting these in now. Me too, Margaret Ann. You know whose punches I absolutely love are Martha Stewart, but she hasn't come out with any new ones in a long time. Okay, got that one in there. And I hope she, I know that her punches are made, or I was told they were made by EK Success, but I don't know what's going on. She makes great punches. I mean, she has some beautiful designs. Okay, now, why aren't they working? Switch off the light set. Switch off the light set? There's no switch.
Hmm. Well, I know these batteries work. Switch off the light set. There's no switch. Okay, do y'all see a switch on here? <laughs> oh, yeah, the round ones, the heavy duty punches. Yeah, those are great. There's no switch on here. But look. I mean, they're in here, but there's no, it says to switch them on and off. Well, there is no, there's no switch. If there's a switch, I'm blind. Come on now. Usually there is a cover. No, there was no cover in this one. This is all there was. Oh man, come on. Nope, that's all that came out. Rumba. All right, just a second. I'm going to take these out. All right, just a second. Okay, I put them back in the flashlight and they worked, but they may be a little weak. So I'm going to try these and see how these work. Oops, I'm sorry. I don't mean to hurt your ears. Okay, so these go here. there and then this positive goes up here oh my gosh it's not working oh well I don't know why they're not working I'm gonna be bummed Okay, well, we're going to move on. I'll figure that out later. <laughs> Check my bulbs. Well, I guess the bulbs are all right. I don't want to pull them out right now and put them back in.
mean, I know I can get more. Oh, right here it just says illustration only, batteries not included. So that's how I have them. I have the positive here and the positive there. See positive, positive? Hmm. I don't know. Oh well, let's keep going. <laughs> All right, so so I have an even space back here. I'm gonna put this here for now. I'll have to. Um, get Greg to help me figure out how to um, do that. Okay, so what I need to figure out is I know that this is going to hang here. Like so. So what I think I'm going to do is I want to put these trees, it's really hard for me to show you guys <laughs> and I apologize for that. Let me see if I can stand it up. So I want to put these trees in here like so. So let me put these here. I want to get my chipboard pieces from the collection. Um, this is the top right here. No, wait a minute. This is the top right here because the words go down in the corner there. So here are the pieces from the collect the chipboard pieces. And we have a Santa. We have a Merry Christmas. I love this right here. Isn't this pretty? We bring you in some. Oops, something just fell. Okay, let me move the heat gun. We don't need that right now. Okay. Hi, Ashley. Well, girl, I wonder you just woke up. You streaming all hours of the night. I mean, you just rocking it, I guess. <laughs> okay, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that, that, that. I don't want that. I have this tree. I have three trees. Some holly. Another piece of holly, an angel, so let me put these back in here. Okay. 
So this is what the inside is going to look like. Oh yeah, they'll get some Wink of Stella. Don't worry. They will get some Wink of Stella. So we have these little trees and we have these big trees. Now we can set these in here like this, but um, if that ball wouldn't jingle all the time and drive us all crazy, I'd go ahead and put it in there now. So let me just hold this. That's about where it's going to be. So that tree might be too big. We could put this tree in there like so. I like the Santa. We could just put them on the side. Okay, so I like that down there like that because I love that little church where it says Merry Christmas and I could pop that up with some foam tape. And then we could put um, Santa back here on this panel and we could put a tree over here on this panel. What do you guys think? And then down here we could put our little trees, you know, down here. This probably wasn't a good project to try and show you guys on the show. <laughs> but we could we could bring this forward, you know, like so. What do you guys think? If we pop this up, you know, build this up, and then we'll put some trees in here, and then we'll take and like put Santa on this side over here, and the Christmas tree over here. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? And then down here, we could put these little trees. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Hey, June Marie. June Marie had an appointment this morning, and she wrote and told me she may not be able to make it until the very end. So June Marie, we're weighing in on what to do with my box right here, my star. So what I did was I bought a paper mache box and I took um, gesso and espresso acrylic paint by Ranger, the dauber, and I mixed the two together and then I painted the box inside out. I only did around the edges on the inside, but I did the front and back on the, the sides and the back on the rest of it. Then we lined it with the uh, Victorian Christmas paper, the holly. And then this is just, you know, the um, another piece that has more of a neutral background. And then I had this little mini set of lights that refuses to work and I have to operate on that. But we poked them through the back and then the um, when it's all done, I'm going to take the lid and just barely touch it on there and hide the wires. And then I'll figure out, I'll get Greg to help me figure out a way to attach this because I don't want to see it. It's kind of ugly. I'll figure out something because it's going to stand up. Yeah, it's a shadow box idea. There you go. All right, so I'm thinking I can put Merry Christmas here. But I want to put something around here before I do that. So maybe maybe I shouldn't do that until the end. And this jingle bell is going to hang down like this. And it says peace. Right? So I guess everybody likes my idea, huh?
Okay, so the only thing is if you put Santa there, when you stand this up, you're not going to see Santa. Guys, this probably was not the best idea to show on camera. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I really, 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 really like this here, but I'm going to have to build that up. Or I don't. I think it would look better if it was built up. See, I would glue it on the point, but I don't think it's going to hold. You know, if I just, I don't think just a little bit of glossy accents is going to hold on the point right there. What do you guys think? I think if I just glue it to this part, it's just not going to hold. Let me see if I can. Oh, hold on, guys. I'm going to see if I can do something with the camera. Oh, put support of cardstock behind it, like on here. Yeah, I'm going to need support, right? So I could put strips of cardstock here. I mean, um, heavy cardstock here and that would hold it up right you know build it up about so high okay let's see chipboard that's what I'm trying to say chipboard Okay, so I have some chipboard. So if I take chipboard and I cut this and make like a um, I'm just cutting it to make this easier to work with here. Instead of a big sheet. Oh, let me move my water out of the way. Okay. four pieces will be enough. Okay. Y'all are awful quiet. <laughs> okay, so might need more than four. Okay.
You know, when you sit here and no one is watching you, you don't feel as, you know, goofy. Because <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay, well, let me see. I can experiment with this. But then when you have all these eyes on you, you're like, oh, my God, what a dummy. <laughs> I don't feel that way most of the time. But, you know, you guys, I, you know me. I usually have everything all thought out and everything, but I just wanted to wing it today. I wanted to just make something for my house and, you know, hang out with everybody. So this is like one big scrap party here. Right? Okay, so let's see. All right. I wish I could fix the camera. Hold on a minute. If you guys get motion sickness, you might want to close your eyes for a minute. Okay. There. Ah, is that better? I don't know if that's better, but let's see. I'm trying to fix it so you guys can see inside what I'm doing. Is that better? Excuse the mess, but at least you can see, right? So if I put this like here, no, because see if it's going to have to be like that, then they're going to have to be longer. That's kind of ugly when you look in, inside, though. That's not pretty at all. <laughs> oh, gosh. So I'm trying to... Can you guys see what I'm doing? Tell me if I'm not making any sense. I just really love that there. Uh, hmm. Now I feel like a dork. <laughs> hmm. This is the top right here. This is the top. Put it on the other point where there is no light in the left. Turn it to the left. Yeah, this is the top right here because see the writing is down here. See, so this is the top. Because the writing is right there. Can you see the writing right there? So this, this is the top right here. Okay. So. I can build this up, but the thing is, it's going to take about an inch and a half. I know my hand's in the way, but I'm trying to hold two things at one time. I don't think I made them long enough. Let me see something. Yes, we can, and now you can, not to be a smarty pants. What? You can what? See me? <laughs> see, I don't want it to be, I mean, you're going to look at it face on, like, you know, this way. So you're looking head on. I guess I'm concerned about 
if people look from the side, I don't want it to be ugly. Yeah, I could put a little box behind there. That's true. crap a -roo. That's a good idea. I'll make a little box and then I'll cover it with this paper and do something like that. And then if they do happen to look from behind, they um, they um, will just see a little box sitting back there. Make a little box. Two sides are matching pennants to fit the star curve and the other two are square. Okay, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I think. No, I know what you mean. <laughs> okay, well, I know something we can do while my brain works on that. One thing I do want to do is I want to take the Tim Holtz stencil. Let's move that out the way. Where did this stencil go? Where did this, stencil? this one right here. So let me fix the camera back. Okay. So what we're going to do. I am. Thank you, Sandra. <laughs> I am. You always give me the best advice. I'm not going to rush it, I promise. But one thing that we can do um, for the next 10 minutes is I want to take this stencil and I want to put it on the sides all the way around the box. And so I have my texture paste right here by Ranger. And I have my spatula. And this I have thought through. <laughs> I'm going to stencil this all the way around the box. Then I'm going to go back in and I'm either going to use um, mica powder or I'm going to take some gel medium and mix um, some glitter in and I'm going to, you know, go over these. Okay? Okay, June Marie, I sure will, honey. June Marie says she doesn't have anything else to do, so take my time. Well, Jean comes on after me, the musical scrapper. She comes on at one. So here's where I'm going to do. Okay? So here we go. This I do have envisioned in my head. Okay. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful. I just love it. Look at it, isn't it gorgeous? Oh, I just love it, love it, love it, love it. I know, Miss Linda, I keep you on your toes one way or the other, right? Okay, so now I'm going to turn this very carefully and I'm going to put it back down.
Thank you, June Marie. And I'm just going to keep going around. Okay, let me get some. Let me get some paste here. Okay. So now I'm going to hold this down again. I think I'm going to hold it down this way this time. I know my thumb's kind of hanging there, but oh, I just love this stencil. Very carefully, I'm going to move my hand up out of the way because I don't want my stencil to shift and the paste get underneath, you know. I'm not looking at the chat right now, guys. gosh just look how pretty 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 take that off and I'm gonna take this off oh, I just love it okay I do too. I'm going to try to let it dry by itself because if you heat set it, you can mess it up. The paste. You can dry it, but not for too long, like Sandra said, because it will mess it up. So I'm just trying to do enough to so that I can leave it here after the show and let this dry and then come back and do the other sides. So now. Um, let's see. I just want to make sure nothing's touching down there. Okay. So now I'm going to do this side here. Maybe I should do it like this. Okay. Now, I know you guys can't see what I'm doing. Well, you can if I do it like that. Okay. Marie, you need to get those stencils out. Yeah, do every other side. Oh, look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? Got just a little bit too much right there, but that's okay. Then I can do this side, and then when these dry, I'll come back and do the others. So I hope you guys have had fun today. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed, you know, hanging out with me and the others in the chat. 
I like it when we can all learn together. This isn't a teaching class today. This is a fly by the seat of my pants day class today. <laughs> oh yeah, I could add the glitter, huh? Yeah, I could. Well, you know, um, June Marie, that's a good question, but I see people use it in their in their uh, journals all the time. Zandra uses it in hers, and if you follow, there's this wonderful, wonderful lady on YouTube. Her name is Vicky Papa something. Let me get her link. I'm going to tell you what. She uses this stuff in her... Um, let me finish putting this on first, and then I'll put her link in the chat. She uses this in her journal all the time, and you just put it, like me, you just put a thin coat on, and she has no problem with it um, coming off. But a lot of, a lot of uh, ladies use it in their journals, and it lasts for a long time. All right, hold on. Let me get Vicky's. Um, link and then I need to get off because Jean's coming on. Papa. Okay, here's her link. She's from um, Greece. Oh, Jennifer's already put it in there. <laughs> She's from Greece. I'm going to tell you what. She does the most beautiful journal pages. I could. I wish she would journal every day. I could sit and watch her every day. I've learned a lot from her. Um, yeah, we're all putting it in there now because we just love her. <laughs> but um, she does a really... She... You know, I learned a lot about um, um, using different types of medium in my art. Well, I haven't done an art journal yet. It's a goal for next year. I learned a lot. I have learned a lot from watching her and others. But Zandra uses this in her mini albums all the time. So, and she's used it on acrylic. Oh, my gosh. I could just watch her all day. Her and Andrea Gomel, Gomel, let me see, um, does somebody have the link to her? If not, I'll grab it. Okay, here's her link. This lady lives in Germany, and yeah, Vicky does cards, journal pages. She does really neat shaker cards. Andrea does, um, if you watched Sandra's show yesterday, she did this, she put this penguin on her journal page, and that's the one that she bought from Andrea Gomel, the lady that's there now. Bye, Sandra. Thanks for your help. I'm sure I'll be talking to you later. <laughs> But anyway, um, they're all really good. They're all really good. So I'm going to sign off now. I'm going over to the musical scrapper. Mike Deacon is awesome too. Yeah, he is. Um, I'm going over to join Jean on the musical scrapper. And so I will see you guys Thursday the um, 10th at 9 o'clock a.m. Pacific and 12 noon Eastern. Okay? Thanks for joining me in my crazy adventures today, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.